Da -dun 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 -dun. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> so unprepared for this shit. <sighs> hey, like a like on fire floor, it's here. Um, I'm amidst a lot of things. My mind is pretty scattered, but I'm finding it really important to document and debut a few iterations of fire pour that I've got before they go off to their prospective uh, homes. So, um, what I want to start with is my own personal set of poi. These are my rigs. Um, three and a half inch monkey fists, the four byte design on a two inch core. This is what I'm using for handles. They are a linen uh, or flax um, diamond braid rope with con rubbers at the end, pretty heavy gauge swivel. The swivels are actually one of the stronger parts of the entire rig, but I like them for the ergonomics of it. They're actually scaled so that it's, um, it's comfy moving from the chain up. Um, while I've got the monkey fists on the mind, these are what they look like new. Give you a side-by-side -side comparison, <laughs> same size. And one issue that the monkey fist knots do have, and I won't be shy to admit it, is here, the wear point at the chain. Um, these are an integral anchor, so the wick in one full length is anchored to a split ring on the chain in the core. Um, that movement does create a bit of a wear point or a wear hot spot. So, using that hot spot as a segue, this is the climax of a new wick design that I've got. Um, the Omegas are something that I've been exploring. Uh, the Omega is a crown sonnet inverted wick design that's you know roughly um, what the Isis wick is. Um, on the point of the wear hot spot that I mentioned on the monkey fists. These guys use an integral uh, cotter pin there that you can see I'm pointing to. So the omegas are based on a four-strand crown sonnet that is re-inverted on itself. So it comes down in a core, opens, comes back up onto itself. And this here is really the best design that I've found in that the tearing out of the profile um, concentrates weight and puts the center of gravity roughly here. There isn't any internal hardware that's going to make it go wonky. Um, do, 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 what do I want to show you? Yes, inspiration point of this guy was Jonathan Alvarez's request for folks to meet the Podpoi profile, to which this was the original iteration, and you can see the profile and size difference. This guy here has got a core, a four-strand core with a larger wick core inside of that, and so it winds up making it quite a bit fatter and quite a bit heavier. Um, it's a little bit too top-heavy for my, my preference. It does match the Podpoi profile a tad closer, but this guy has been my favorite for in-air flight and because of the cotter pin and direct mount swivel. Um, this guy also features a monkey fist handle. It's a three byte um, handle. I believe this is a six mil utility 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 cord. Uh, you can tell my mind is scattered. Um, whereas standard handle would be something more like this, which is a cold cord integral swivel there, and either a vinyl or rubber knob. The rubber knob being this guy as opposed to the vinyl. Um, mm -mm -mm. What I'm going to call the standard um, Omega design is this here in my left hand. You can see that the weave is a little bit more open and that the entire thing is one full box profile. The I, I have yet to name these, but my preferred design, which is here in my right hand, um, uses the same amount of wick, but you can see the difference in how tight the weave actually wound up being. And you can see that with the tiered top, the center of gravity winds up about you know, two-thirds the way down rather than halfway down the wick. To give you an idea of what um, some of the original or what the... Um, let's see. Yeah, one of my original designs of the Omega is this guy. Um, this guy's more of a pine cone profile, and what happened here is that you can see the finial knot is at the bottom rather than the top here, 
and actually went on the outside of the core, which would on this iteration be on the top outside, rather than ending part way. So there's a big difference in what you wind up with by putting the finial knot on top of the core rather than on the outside of it, where you wind up with a tiered down profile rather than this like pine cone end. For another size comparison, um, these guys are the Moonblaze wicks from Fire Mecca. This one is a four inch wick. Yeah. These guys are about five, five and a quarter. Actually, I want to measure that so I can give you an accurate uh, there. While I've got you here, <laughs> da, 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 four, four and a half. Okay, so this guy here is four, four and a half here. And these are three and a quarter. Um, also, while we're doing the size comparison game, we will put the monkey fist right next to it. And keep in mind, each one of these designs utilizes the same amount of wick, except for this fatty, which has a core inside of it, and it weighs quite a bit more. Um, while I've got all of these here, and you can see all the leashes dangling, I want to be sure that you guys know why the long leash. Um, the long leash is something that I haven't found many other builders using, and it's a really, really convenient system. So. Uh, on a set of pour that's this long, this amount of leash isn't going to be a melt or fire hazard. You know, it's really far away. If you happen to drop your pour, you've got a lot of play for your nylon utility cord to not land on the wick. If it does happen to land on the wick, I haven't had any melt problems even with cold cord. Um, the advantage and point of the design is that with a key grip style, you know, between your index and your thumb, you can wrap two fingers, shorten, you know, essentially choked up so that you go from this length, and I'm going to wrap and you can't see it on screen, to that length, and still retain an active swivel. So if I've got two sets, I'm going to use the heavy ones, and I'm spinning here, yeah, and I've got them at full length, these are rather long foil and rather heavy, I can, by crossing both of them, Shorten quite a bit. So full length, shorten, and I still have an active swivel. Yeah? Um, there's no other way around that to be able to choke up and have a multi length um, running rig and have an active swivel unless you have this um, five and a half inch length leash. Um, I find it really, really useful. I totally dig it. And woo! With that extended length of leash, um, it's also really, really comfy with catches, yeah? So, like I said earlier, this swivel is ergonomically matched so that it feels right down the chain, and you don't really feel any difference or catch in that. The weakest point is actually that split ring rather than the swivel. And even at that, I've actually broke chain before the split ring. Anyway, back to the original point, um, is that ergonomically speaking, this long tether is really, really nice for catches. So, as I'm laying here, you know, no beat tosses are going to be really comfy. Even if I catch the chain and have it slide all the way through my hand, it's still very, very comfy. And I don't have such a small aim target to meet. Um, and you see, just, just now, too, it's become so natural. I've already choked up. Um, it's really easy to do it in these reverse um, hip butterfly reels. Um, there, I've just shortened up again. Um, and there's actually really elegant ways to do so. Um, so say if I'm here, there, I've just choked up again. Yeah, so out, over shoulders, choked up. And now that I'm shorter, you know, I can make that guy happen with good clearance. Um, a lot of these got these interior um, anti-spins or buzz saws will want you to choke up. And then as soon as you move back to the outside, you're at full length. Yeah. Um, which ones do I have in hand? While I've got these guys in hand, um, you can see how smooth the bearings are rolling. Um, I want to show you the way that they handle stalls. Um, 
I find these really, really ideal because of that end weight that I've mentioned and because of the you know, pod poi weight distribution that I'm after. Um, they handle really well in flight. Yeah, you can see the no beat toss. These guys are handling really, really nicely. Vertical stalls are great. Horizontals are awesome. And another thing too about the tiered head <laughs> is that you can go boom, boom, boom for you glow stickers that really like that. They're much more comfortable. Um, with a box design like this, that junction is kind of a pinch point on your shoulders. Whereas with the tiered design here, as it hits your shoulder, it bounces off much more comfortably. Yeah, because it's able to roll, click, and then back. Um, monkey fists also are kind of a pinch point. As they hit your shoulder, um, that little spot can pinch your flesh in there. Um, so say, since we're talking about stalls still, these heavy bad boys, they're really slow and you can really trace, float them into your stalls, but they do wiggle a bit. They're more inclined to wobble when you yank it back down and you can see that happening now as I'm pulling down. However, in a side-by-side -side comparison, the monkey fists are absolutely ideal for illusory bits because of their round profile. You know, these guys, if you give them the slightest wiggle, that bar of light all of a sudden has a bit of a wonk to it. Whereas these guys, if I'm doing single point pendulums, you can't really see the wiggle in there, right? Um, what else, what else, what else? Talking about running length, these guys are uber long, yeah? Really, really long monkey fists. And my patron here really appreciates the long style of running them. And because of that long leash, you know, I can still bring them in. Although, at full length, they're huge! <laughs> um, so yeah. Fire Poi Debutante from Leica of Leica on Fire Flow Arts. You can see there's lots of different options, many different running lengths, many different handles. We've got Flax with the Kongi, Monkey Fished with the Utilicord, Utilicord with a rubber and a really fatty handle to match the fatty body of it, this guy here. And you've got something more standard, which is the rubber and, uh, um, 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 Paracord in this sense, because this guy's kind of rugged and he likes he likes it rough. And then another standard iteration with the cold cord and the vinyl knob and weights inside. And that's all I've got for you today. Enjoy. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for your patience. Been asking a lot of time of you, but I hope you learned a thing or two. Enjoy. Have a good day.